G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about something very fundamental but very important. It's called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law describes or enables us to calculate the way that electricity flows through a circuit. And I'm doing this video as a precursor to the reviews of the Turnigy Graphene batteries because I want to talk about some really fundamental issues such as internal resistance. But until I've explained what resistance is and what voltage is and what current flow is and what power is, it wouldn't be much use doing that video. So I'm going to assume that everybody knows nothing which in my case is pretty close to the truth, but I'm going to lead you through the basics. Now, if you already know about Ohm's Law, you might find this video very boring, so I suggest you switch over and watch something on the other channel. But if you want to be refreshed, if you want to know about Ohm's Law, stay tuned, and I'll do my best to educate you. Right, as far as electricity goes, we've got three main things. We've got voltage, which is V equals voltage. There you go, voltage. And we know the batteries have a voltage, you know, the three cell LiPos, 11.1 volts, and uh, the mains voltage, depending on the country you live in, can be 110 volts, 230 volts. So voltage is a measure of what we call the pressure. Well, analogy is the pressure of electricity. It's like water pressure. You know, when you have a water mains, it might be 60 psi or whatever. That's the pressure, and the pressure is the same as the voltage. It's the voltage or the pressure that tries to push the electricity through the wires, through the motors, through whatever we've got connected to our battery. So it's the driving force is the voltage. Now the next thing is something that we call I, but it's actually the current. And I suppose I should write voltage is measured in volts, of course, that makes a lot of sense. Current is measured in amps. There you go, those are the measurement units. So we use the symbol I, I don't know why, I guess I should know, but I've forgotten years ago, so it doesn't matter, but we call the current is called I. And the current is actually, can, relating it back to water, it's the flow, it's the amount of electrons that are actually flowing through a wire or any part of the circuit. So the voltage is the pressure, it's what's pushing things, and the current is the flow, it's the actual amount of electricity, that, or amount of electrons that are flowing through a particular part of the circuit. I've got a fly in here, I'm gonna kill the bloody thing, hang on. And the other factor involved in our circuit is the resistance, R equals resistance. And that's measured in ohms, ohms. Sometimes we use the little sigma, was it omega? A omega, that's right, sigma is something else. It's, we use the omega symbol to indicate ohms. So <clears throat> those are the three factors that will affect how electricity flows through a circuit. It's really not that hard. Um, in terms of water, consider R to be like the, the diameter of a pipe. You know, small pipes, it's much harder to push a given amount of water through, so you need more pressure. And it's the same, um, a, High resistance is like a small pipe. You need more voltage to push the current through a high, vo high, a, a high resistance resistor. So these three factors are all related. And what we have over here is what I call the Ohm's, or everyone calls it, the Ohm's Law Triangle. And you can see it's got voltage, it's got resistance, and it's got current. And by drawing it in this little triangle form, we can easily substitute numbers and calculate missing pieces. I'm going to draw a real simple little circuit now. Um, let's say we've got um, a battery and it goes through a resistor. And this is plus and this is minus. Not that it matters in this circuit, but here we go. This is a very fundamental, very basic circuit. And we can do some really cool stuff. Now, let's say our battery is 10 volts, because that's an easy number to work with. 10 volts, we know one of the fundamentals of our circuit. Now, let's say we wanted to have, um, let's say half an amp flow through our circuit. Let's say we decide yeah, we want to take half an amp out of this 10 volt battery. What size of resistor will we need to do that? Well, we go to our Ohm's Law triangle. We know our voltage. Let's draw the triangle here. We know our voltage is 10. So we can fill that bit in there. Easy peasy. And we know the current we want. We want I to equal 0 0.5 amps. But what size resistor are we going to need to ensure that we get half an amp flowing? Because Obviously, the, the, more, the greater value resistor, the more it will resist the flow of electricity, so the less current will flow. We need to calculate how we're going to calculate the size of resistor that's going to give us half an amp. Well, Ohm's Law Triangle comes in, so we just simply, we know what the I value is going to be, the current, so let's just put that in there, 0 0.5, and now we can calculate, well, automatically we can see by simply, we've got a division here, we've got 10, or we've got 10 over 0 0.5, which is 20. So the missing number is 20, we've calculated it out. So if we want half an amp to flow in here, we need a 20 ohm resistor. Isn't that simple? So simple, we can calculate that basic stuff. You might be thinking right now, why would I ever want to do that? I don't give a damn about the current. 
But there are other aspects as well. We can, we've just calculated the size of the resistor. What say, let's take that out, let's say we put in here a 50 ohm resistor. So now we know the voltage. Let's do another triangle because we're using the same formulas. Here we go. Now we've got other unknowns. We've got a 10 volt thing, so it's still 10 up here. This time we know 50 ohms is the resistance. So over in here we can put 50. And we say, oh, what is 10 divided by 50? Anyone got the answer? Yes, it is 0.2. No, what is it? Um, 10 divided by 50. Da, 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 da. Yes, it's 0 0.2. So now we can, and that's the I value, see, I, 0 0.2. So now we can say, okay, we know that if we do that, the current will be 0 0.2 amps. So if we know any two of these figures, we can work out the third one by simply substituting values into our Ohm's law triangle. Let's do the final one because I want to show you all the options. <clears throat> now let's, here we go, let's take all these out of here. Let's say we've got a, a 10 ohm resistor. 10 ohm resistor, and let's say we want to have 2 amps, 2 amps flowing through our circuit. So I wants to equal 2. So now we've got our Ohm's Law triangle. I'll just I'll take away this one because I need more space on the board. Here we go. Here's our Ohm's Law triangle. This time we know the resistance, that's 10. And we know the current, that's 2. Now because these are on the same line, we multiply them together to get the missing value. So it's 2 times 10, 20. So we need 20 volts to get a current of 2 amps through our 10 ohm resistor. It's all, it all comes together. Math's really simple. And even if you don't know how to rearrange algebraic formulas, then you can use this triangle and you can calculate all that stuff out. Because we're going to use this Ohm's Law triangle because in the next video I'm going to calculate the internal resistance of a LiPo battery and show you how you can do it yourself if you wanted to. Uh, although most chargers have got a little facility now, you can press buttons and it'll, it'll show you the internal resistance. It's not always accurate because internal resistance of batteries can vary depending on a number of things. Temperature and also the current you're drawing from it. When you draw tiny little amounts of current from a battery, the internal resistance appears to be much lower than when you draw large amounts of current. So depending on how much current you use to do the test, the internal resistance result you get will vary significantly and I'll show you that in the next video as well because the figures I measured were at a much higher current than the figures the charger uses and I got quite different results to the numbers the charger produces. But also what I'm going to do is show you uh, now about power because we've got voltage, current, resistance but ultimately if we do this, if we put a current of 2 amps through our 10 ohm resistor it's going to get hot. I mean resistors get hot when you put current through them. That's what happens because Electricity is of no use if it doesn't do any work. I mean, electricity, if electricity flows, unless it causes something to happen, well, there's no point in having it flowing. So this is sort of the equivalent of a, a bar heater in a resistive heater. If you've got a heater in your living room or you might use an electric jug or any of those things, what we do is we pass a current through a resistor and in the process of squeezing through that resistor, as this resists the flow of electricity, it creates heat. And that's where we turn our electricity into something useful turns it into heat. So how much heat would we get from, or how much power would go into this 10 ohm resistor? How can we calculate that? Well, more formulas. Let's go over here. I'll do a formula for power. Power formula is really easy. It is the voltage times the current. There we go. So if you know the voltage and you know the current, you can calculate the amount of power that's going to be produced. So in this case, yeah, we know we've got 20 volts times the current is 2 amps. So we're going to get 40 watts. Watts is how we measure our power. So this resistor here would have 40 watts of power being dumped into it. So naturally it would get hot because 40 watts is quite a bit. Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that's how we can calculate the amount of power going into our um, resistor. But there's another formula too we could use and that is I, that's the current squared, times the resistance. And so we know those figures. Let's see if that produces the same thing. Now the current is 2, 2 amps. So let's say 4, because that's 2 times, well, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, multiply it by the resistance, which is 10 ohms, and that also equals, this equals 40, and so does this. Oh, sorry, that, that doesn't, it's just symbolic. So yeah, so we get the same result whether we use this formula, V times I, or I squared times R, whether we multiply the voltage by the current, or we square the current and multiply by the resistance. We still get the same 
figure of 40 watts. But now, so we have two formulas here that we will remember for later on when we look at batteries and power and things like that. So it's Ohm's law. It's really, it's really simple. It might look complicated because of the algebra involved and the, the, the formulas, but honestly, this little triangle here makes it simple. And as you can see, if we know this stuff, we can work out some really cool. There we go, basic Ohm's law. This will come in handy when I do my ham radio series as well, because this is one of the basic fundamentals of electronics and electricity. If you don't know this, then there's no good learning other stuff, because a lot of stuff is based on this. You need to know how electricity flows through a circuit to understand more complicated concepts. So there you go, that's Ohm's law. If anyone's got any questions about this, then put them in the comment section. If you've got any comments, put them there as well, because that's why it's called the comment section. And I'll do my best to address your your comments and your questions. So there you go, that's the basics, fundamentals. You may think I'll never use that, but you do need to understand this to understand what I'm going to do in the next video with these LiPo batteries. We compare the internal resistance, we calculate the internal resistance, we talk about what internal resistance does. And I'll give you a little bit of a clue. We've already worked out that when you pass a current through a resistor, it gets hot, it gets heat, because this power goes into it, power is released. So if we have a resistance inside our battery, the internal resistance of our battery, then obviously as we're passing current, well the current's flying through that battery because remember in a circuit it goes right the way around, so it's going to go through the battery, the battery's going to get hot. So we'll talk about how important internal resistance is and just how hot your LiPo gets when you load it up. Anyway, thanks for watching, time for me to clean the whiteboard off and do the next video. Bye for now.